So what are forces in equilibrium? First, let's look at the concept of equilibrium. Equilibrium indicates a state of balance. So when are forces said to be in equilibrium? Forces are said to be in equilibrium when the sum of forces in any two opposite directions are of the same magnitude. They are balanced. They cancel off each other. Hey guys, this is Mr. Ruel here. If you like educational content like this, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And also, if you do enjoy this video and you're learning something, please do me a favor and hit that like button. So let's get into the lesson. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do calculations when it comes to forces and equilibrium. I'll be using several examples, including an object that is on a slanted surface, on a slope, as well as when there are three forces acting on an object. Let's get right to it. First, we must understand Newton's second law. F is equals to M A. Now, this F here is very important to note that this F is the resultant force. I have a video on resultant force. If you're not sure about resultant forces, then you can check my video. The link is in the description. So, this is the resultant force. Newton's second law states that the resultant force acting on an object is directly proportional to its acceleration. This A is the acceleration. So when there is a resultant force, there is acceleration. When there is no resultant force, when the resultant force equals to zero, then there is no acceleration. And this is the situation where forces are said to be in equilibrium. When there is no resultant force, when there is no acceleration. Let's say we had an object and there were only two forces acting on the object. One force towards the right, let's call it F1. And then we had another force acting towards the left, F2. As long as this object is not accelerating, remember there are two conditions for this. Either it is stationary or moving at constant velocity. In either case, it is not accelerating. So if it is not accelerating, then there is no resultant force. When there is no resultant force, this means that the forces acting on this object are in equilibrium. They are balanced in any two opposite directions. In this case, we only have forces acting in two opposite directions, that is the right and the left. So we could say that the sum of forces acting on the left will be equals to the sum of forces acting on the right. Now, this would mean that F2 is equals to F1. So this is how we use forces in equilibrium. Now, what happened if it wasn't balanced? Now, let's say in this same case, let's say that F1 was larger than F2, was larger than F2. If this was the case, then the forces are not balanced. They don't have the same magnitude in two opposite directions. And in this case, what will happen is, since there is an excess magnitude of force in the direction of F1, there will be a resultant force in the direction of F1. This will result in this object accelerating to the right. As long as there is no resultant force, there will be no acceleration and the magnitude of the forces have to be the same. So this works for any direction. You can take any direction. You can take up and down. They must be balanced as well. You can also take diagonally here and here. Any two opposite directions, the magnitude of forces must be the same. Otherwise, there would be a resultant force. Let's take a look at objects on a slope. So let's say I had an object on a slope, resting on a slope. So this object is not moving. As long as it's not moving, if the velocity is zero, it also means the acceleration is zero. This is the most important thing. If the acceleration is zero, that means the resultant force acting on the object is zero. There is no resultant force. And therefore, we can conclude that the forces acting on this object are in equilibrium. First, we need to identify all the forces acting on the object. So let's label all the forces acting on this particular object. So as long as the object has mass, the object will have weight. And remember, weight originates from the center of mass. The weight acts on the center of mass of the object. That's why we draw the weight from the center of the object. And then we have the normal reaction. Normal reaction originates from the surface, normal to the surface. So this is the normal reaction. R, and we also have friction, we have friction in this direction, so this is F. 
So there are three forces acting on this object. Let's say it's given that the mass of object is 3 kilograms, 3 kg. All right. So now we are to find all the forces acting on the object. So the first thing that we can find when we have mass, immediately we can find weight. Now let's assume gravitational acceleration to be approximately 10. So this weight W is equals to mg, which is equals to 3 times 10. I'm using an approximation of 10. So this will give us a value of 30 newtons. So the weight here is 30 newtons. Now, how do we find the normal reaction and the friction? So again, we have to understand that as long as there is no acceleration, all the forces acting on this object are in equilibrium. That means the forces in any two opposite directions must have equal magnitude. So now we can pick a direction because this applies to any and all directions. So let's say I wanted to find the value of friction. If I wanted to find the value of friction, I would look at the direction of friction and the direction opposite of friction. The sum of forces acting in the direction of friction, I'm just going to use an arrow to represent the direction, must be equals to the sum of forces acting in the opposite direction, the direction opposite to friction. So remember, this is the sum of forces. We are talking about all the forces acting in that particular direction and the opposite direction. So let's look at all the forces acting in the direction of friction. In the direction of friction, we only have friction. We only have one force, friction. But we need to remember that components of forces have to be summed up as well. So you have to look at all the other forces and identify if there are any component of the forces acting in that particular direction. If you're not sure how to find components, we have to use resolution of forces. I also have a video on that. I will link the video in the description. So if you are to find the component of R, let's look at R. R and F are perpendicular to one another. A force does not have a component in the perpendicular direction and beyond. That means 90 degrees and beyond to the particular force, there is no component. This means the normal reaction here has no component in the direction of F, in the direction of friction. Let's look at W. W is more than 90 degrees. Let's join this here. So this angle here is greater than 90 degrees, which also means that W does not have a component in the direction of the force F. So we have to do this for every single force that is acting on the object. You have to check to see if there are any components of forces acting in that particular direction. In this case, there is not. So therefore, the only force acting in the direction of friction is friction itself. So we have F on the left. Now this must be equals to, since forces are in equilibrium, this must be equals to the sum of forces acting in this direction, here, in the orange arrow, the direction of the orange arrow. Now, if we look at the diagram right away, we will see that there is no force acting in that particular direction. However, again, we have to be aware of component forces. Now, when we look at the normal reaction, the normal reaction is also perpendicular, 90 degrees to the direction in the, of the orange arrow as well. And therefore, normal reaction will not have a component in that direction. However, when we look at weight, now, this angle here, let's find out this angle here. If this is 30 degrees, notice that we can form a right angle triangle here. I'm just going to extend this line right to the bottom, and we have a right angle triangle. Now, in the right angle triangle, this is 30 degrees, this is 90 degrees, which means this angle, this yellow angle here, must be 90 minus 30, which is 60 degrees. This is 60 degrees. So, we have a component of weight in this direction, in the direction of the orange arrow. So, how do we find the component? Again, you can watch the video if you're not too sure about this. But the shortcut method is, if you go along the angle, now we are going along 60 degrees. So, the component of weight in this direction, the component of weight in this direction will be W cosine 60, W cos 60. So let's write that down. 
the direction opposite to friction, we have W cos 60. This is the component of the weight acting in that direction. Now again, the normal reaction has no effect in the direction of the orange arrow because it is perpendicular to it. And of course, friction is acting in the opposite direction. So we've already accounted for that on the left side of the equation. So that means there is no other force acting in the direction of the orange arrow. So we've got our complete equation here. Now we just have to substitute the values. So W was 30, as we found out earlier. W cos 60. So this is equals to 30 times cos of 60 is half. And therefore, the answer is the friction is 15 newtons. Now let's look at how to find the normal reaction. It is the same method. By the way, guys, if you've learned something so far, please don't forget to hit that like button. So let's go on to normal reaction. Since all forces are in equilibrium, we can use the same concept here. But this time, since we want to find normal reaction, it is easy to use the direction of the normal reaction and the direction opposite to the normal reaction. The sum of forces in the direction of the normal reaction must be equal to the sum of forces in the direction opposite to the normal reaction. So first, let's look at the direction of normal reaction. Again, just like when we did for friction, for normal reaction, there is only one force acting in its direction, which is the normal reaction itself. So the only force acting in the direction is R. So let's write that down first. So we have R. Now we have to check for component of forces. So let's check for component of friction. Friction is 90 degrees to R, it's perpendicular to R and therefore friction will not have any component force in the direction of R. Then W, let's look at W. So W and R have an angle of more than 90 degrees. So as long as the angle is 90 degrees or more, the force will not have a component in that particular direction. So there's no component of W. Therefore, again, the only force acting in the direction of the normal reaction is the normal reaction itself. Let's look at the direction opposite to normal reaction, that is the direction of the pink arrow. Once again, it seems like there are no forces acting in that direction. Friction, normal reaction and weight are all not acting in that direction. However, we need to check for components of forces that are acting in that direction. So first, let's check friction. Again, this is perpendicular to the pink arrow. Therefore, friction does not have any component in that direction. Now, normal reaction is in the opposite direction. So we've already accounted for it on the left side of the equation. Let's look at weight. So what is the angle here between the pink arrow and weight? Now again, we can form another right angle triangle. So if I extend this pink arrow here, if I just extend it, then we have another right angle triangle here. So, since this was 60 degrees, this angle here will be 90 minus 60, which is 30 degrees. So, just a tip here, this angle between the weight and the direction perpendicular to the slope downwards will always be the same as the angle of the slope itself, 30 degrees. So, if the angle of the slope was 30 degrees, this angle here would be 30 degrees as well. Now, again, we need to find the component of weight, so we need to do resolution of forces. If we resolve this, then we go along 30 degrees, then this would be W cosine 30 degrees. This is the component of weight acting in the direction opposite to the normal reaction. And therefore, we have R is equals to W cosine 30 degrees. There are no other forces acting in this direction. And so, once again, all we have to do is substitute the values. This is equals to 30, because weight is 30 Newton, as we found earlier. This is equals to 30. Cosine 30 is square root 3 over 2. And so, the answer here will be 15 square root 3 Newtons. Of course, you could go on further and give it in either decimals or in fraction.
Now, this is how we find the normal reaction and the friction acting on an object using forces in equilibrium. Again, the concept is that as long as the object is not accelerating, then the resultant force acting on the object has to be zero. There is no resultant force if there is no acceleration. And so the forces, the sum of forces in any two opposite directions must have equal magnitude. This also works if the object was moving down the slope at constant velocity. The calculation would be exactly the same. If you've learned something today, please do me a favor and hit that like button and even drop a comment if you feel like it. I will be posting at least one video a week, so I will see you in the next video.